Old Swan, Liverpool's busiest fire station. It's five in the morning and Red Watch have been called to a house fire. A person's reported call is the most serious kind of emergency. People could be trapped inside the house. She can't get over the top by us. Firefighter Peter Huff lives in the road and suspects the directions they've been given may be wrong. It could be Ardley Road, which is behind us, but if it's actually a church road house, you've got to go press the road for. Good job, anyway. We can run down, but it's a long road, here, so. Do you know where it is? I It's down, halfway down by the wall. We're going to have to go down to it. If people are trapped, seconds lost could cost them their lives. The inaccurate address given by the 999 caller means Red Watch must continue on foot. The engines and all the firefighting equipment they carry will have to go round the long way. There's confusion. It isn't clear whether there's anyone in the house. Inside, the thick black smoke makes the search difficult. Oh, no, there's a mattress here at the bed. And the bumps in the back. As the search continues inside, firefighters outside are trying to piece together what's happened. Three children were in there. Four. Four. Both those little ones just gone past you now. Yeah, yeah. both yeah. of them. Uh, we're just trying to find out exactly what's happened at the moment. There's a lot of confusion. As you can see, the smoke is coming out the bedrooms. A lot of people standing around. A lot of people uh, screaming and what have you. So it's hard to find out exactly what's going on. The only way you can do that is communication between us and neighbours and tell us what's exactly going on. It's taken 10 minutes to put out the fire and complete the search. They now know there's no one inside. There's supposed to be children still in there. As we arrived, there's a shack on the floor opposite saying there's still children inside. So obviously we all had to just get in there. The family of five had been asleep in the house as the fire burned. The mother and two of her children made their own way to safety. Her two-year-old son and one-year-old baby, trapped by the flames upstairs, were rescued by men working opposite. As Gavin Bassey searched the house, he was unaware they were all safe. Oh, they were all out. But it was in that bedroom that they were in. There was two beds in there, you know. But um, I think they'd all got them out. I think they were, the lady might have been asleep in front of the fire downstairs or something. Although it looks like the flames are out, they must make sure there's no hidden burning which could start the fire again. I'm the brains, they're the brawn, you see. Last year, 147 people were rescued by the brigade. For the firefighters, calls which involve the possibility of someone being trapped makes them amongst the most stressful of incidents. We made our way up the stairs, couldn't see anything at this point. This room's red off. See the handprints on the wall where the men have been searching, you see? You know what I mean? With his hands, you can see his fingers on the wall where he's been looking. They would have looked around here, looked in here, even on the window. Now, the kids who were in here, apparently, as the story goes, they said that a lamp fell on the bed. If you look at the arc on the floor of where the, the burn is most severe, you would believe that, like, a lamp could have been plugged in there and fallen on the bed if it had been on for hours, like, and that might have led to the fire, you know? They got them all out, they were dead lucky. Dead lucky. You find a room on fire, you want to make sure everybody's out. Close the door behind you. That way, containing the fire in that one room, save it affecting the rest of the house and or anybody else who's in the house, do you know what I mean? If you leave the door open, this is what happens. It affects the whole of the house. 
I mean, I've seen, like, uh, houses where the door's been closed and, like, there's been no effect to the other rest. That, that room would be gutted and there's been no effect to the rest of the house, you know what I mean? It's just a little tip, like, you know what I mean? But people, you know, sometimes the locks don't work on the door. Don't. Yeah, that's a little lock on it. But then maybe if she closed the door, she might not have heard the kids screaming. As the clearing up continues, Red Watch stumble across another survivor. A mongol or all the stuff there. Yeah? Just by magic, it appeared. Put it on your head, Carl. It looked like a hair from a distance, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbits reported that, this guy. Oh, I thought we were kept there all the time. Was it Rabbits reported? Yeah. Yeah. Where was he? I'm yeah. just here. I just, I just I look after the bedroom and then I'm sitting there. Well, I'm surprised he Camouflage, survived. Camouflage, you see. We're going back now. We've opened South 8 1, South 8 1, South 8 2. All finished upstairs now. Can we so well, shut the house up? Shot. Yeah. Peter, you're. I'm saying Peter Elmer's upstairs there. No, go to Hey, get back. It's 6 30 a.m., and Red Watch can now head back to base. The RSPCA have been called to collect the rabbit. Need to be able to do your job, you know. And do it well, you know. Yeah, that's great. It's good fun when you're working together, you know, and you work with a nice, nice bunch of fellas and that. Is Rolf's hospital open this right. late at night? That's right. Will he well be? He will be. Uh, we'll get it checked out for any sort of you know, smoke problems. And um, we'll get it in the vets for a day or so, and then we'll get off to our wood kennels and we'll look after it and we'll either reunite it with the owners at some stage or find a new home yeah. for it. Anyway, I'm very grateful for what you did. Thanks a lot. See you now. <laughs> OK, see ya. Red Watch are nearing the end of their 15-hour shift. Within an hour of their return, they've been called to another house fire. It's another person's report of Kinsey's Avenue. For the second time this morning, it's persons reported. Again, there could be lives at risk. We're going to another address in Kingsley's Avenue. As Red Watch arrive, people are struggling out onto the ledge. A fire downstairs and a double lock front door means the only escape is through an upstairs window. There's confusion. The house must be searched to make sure there's no one left inside. Stage 1BA, one high pressure hose wheel jet. Search in progress. I'm not going to the stairs. Must be that way, Cal. I've never seen a set up like this. Hello? Oh. It looks just like a massive to me. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone on it. 
Off you go. The family appear to have escaped unharmed, but will be taken to hospital for tests. Just eight minutes after the 999 call was received, the fire's out, and Phil Roberts and Peter Huff have completed their search. Twice in 20 minutes, isn't it? They were lucky. Certainly were. What was on fire? I never saw what was on fire. Kitchen, kitchen fire. Kitchen fire. There we go again. You never know when it's going to go. That's two in what? In an hour, isn't it? Not half an hour. You never know. You just don't know. Gavin was first into the kitchen where the fire started. I wasn't sure what was on fire when I come in. All this was blazing. The kids have been messing and putting makeup and stuff like metal lipsticks and stuff like that in the um, in the microwave. And obviously, when they get out, like in the ignite, you know, especially with like oily lipsticks, so that would blaze, you know. Everything in there can be replaced, but the kids that came out the bedroom window can't be done. So it's unusual for the drivers to rush the window. Two keen drivers, I think. Two drivers. Paul and Keen. Assisted in the rescue. By a passerby uh, who's uh, yeah, now right. gone to work. As we got there, the passerby got up onto the parapet roof, and he was the link between the woman passing them to him and then down to us. So that's how the four kids and then the woman finally came off. Until the woman jumped on top of me. You've done well there, Tom. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have thought there was a bedroom here, but there isn't. That and that cave, yeah. Why did you go to turn the lights on the stairs? No, it's no, left. Someone said, let's go and have a look in the bedroom at the front of the house. And as I went like that, it was the top of the stairs on the floor to turn to come down. Yeah. Every time we turn out, and Tommy forgets to put his socks on. It's a job. Or doesn't have time to put his socks on. It's a job. Then we get a job. We got a blaze. That was about the tenth time tapping now, isn't it? I usually put them in the pocket. At the end of a 48-hour tour, Red Watch can now go off duty. Four days later, they're back on call. For the first time in eight years, Red Watch is expecting a new recruit, who they hope will have useful skills. Well, we're getting a new recruit. We don't know who it is yet. Hopefully it'll be useful, you know. Sort of a, a plaster will do, I think. They have no plaster on the watch. Yes, fellas have been fighting wars in the Falklands and then joining, joining the job or fighting the war in Ulster or something. And then, so they're not, they're not going to be uh, put off by anything they see in this job, are they? But then again, you can get wet behind the A19, you know, he's done nothing, so... It's the first call of the day, a skip on fire. Because there's no real risk to life, only one of Oswan's fire engines is called out. Probably spontaneous combustion. I don't even know what that means. Did you like this colour? All the time, when the kids are on holiday, we always be called to skip and stuff like that. For the last 17 weeks, Red Watch's new recruit has been learning to be a firefighter. Welcome to the Passat Parade of Recruit Course 496. Dress! This is the last day at the training school. 3,000 people applied to join the brigade last year, 150 of them women. All the 70 successful candidates were men. One of them, Mark Deaver, will start his career with Red Watch. His life on a fire station is not quite the same as the recruit post. And I know that there's a great deal of apprehension about getting out and that applying to the blue lights for you. Remember, you're here and you're a very special profession. Um, like aerosol canisters and gas canisters, like 
Now, even when they're empty, like, they're still dangerous. So you've got to be careful, like, you know, don't get too close until you knock the fire down. But, um, yeah, they can, be, they can be dangerous, yeah. Depending on what the people throw in them. Oh! <laughs> so, who is that? <laughs> so me about to being dangerous. You put a skip fire out, you get hit on the head with a snowball. It's something I've always wanted to do. I just hope it's a good bunch of lads. I've heard it, it is, so as long as it's a day, I enjoy myself, that's the main thing. It may not be a large fire, but it doesn't seem to want to go out. Going on fire again, over. Yeah, no, I first one does well going out. That's well going, look at it, look at the smoke, that's not sticky. That's the first one, the second one's not out, it's going back. Open it, Put a man to do the job. Quite a bit of a, you know, smoke, I thought. Clean up after certain people. Well going, look at it. We were just practicing. What, what we said was, we were just stopping and get back on again and just practice what we're doing so we get it right. You see. The 1950s pin man. Oh yeah, is that one out? Obviously. That's what I joined for. Be a bin man. The pass out parade's over and Mark's new life as a firefighter is about to begin. One big happy family. <laughs> Red Watch's next call is to a familiar address. Because of the potential risk to life, both fire engines are required. Seven times I've had you out. Yeah. And not one of you, not one of you made the date with me. Uh, the young lady had left um, her tea on while she was watching the television. Uh, it consisted of um, half a dozen spare ribs and she's let them boil dry. So it's only bent the pan a little bit. But as you heard, she's done it seven times in two years. So at least she's consistent. She must like burnt food. See, this could be your minute. This could be your minute, girls. Come on. You haven't been smoking those funny cigarettes again, have you? Have you? Oh. By the end of the day, the only other calls Red Watch had been called out to were some bin bags on fire and a flooded house. Four months ago, Mark Deaver was a forklift truck driver. Today, he's about to become a firefighter. That's the first thing, that's the point. But you will notice that it's not just you, everyone gets it. I'm making taken out of them, so it's not just yeah. aimed at you. Morning, Red Watch. No, I'm talking about Blakey. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Red Watch, Red Watch, shut. Answer your names, please. South 81, number one, Firefighter Bassey. Yo! Driver, Firefighter Don. Yo! Also, a new recruit, Firefighter Diva. Welcome, Mark. Mark to his friends. <laughs> South 82, number one, Firefighter Roberts. Yeah! Driver, Firefighter Sheer. And number three, Firefighter Puff. Sir. Yeah. Red Watch, check the machine, check the eggs, all out. Yo, what is it? Mark, can I have your number, please? 5164. 5164. That was a kick. Before it comes off. Married. Young C and Fringle. Ah, I love it. Number one, please. Shopping. I need some bread. B R E A D. Can I use spelling? Which one, these ones? Routine tasks have to be carried out in between calls. He's yeah, the cup for that one. I'll come back later. Be quicker than that. It's a dirty job. And that's why Mark's doing it. 
while Red Watch have not yet been called out, down the road at Low Hill Fire Station, they're having a busy day. The fire in the flat is already their fifth call of the day. I can smell it. I can smell it. Are you punching it? Yeah, I don't know. Take a line up there. I live right next door, pop me. John, want some breaking in here? Station officer Gary Hollis investigates. Thick black stone, John. Gary discovers there may be somebody inside. One of the neighbours said there's a report of two schoolgirls been squatting in here. Firefighters will have to search every room. Back at Old Swan, Red Watch are working, but not at putting out fires. Everything's got to be clean. Immaculate. I wonder where my toothbrush is gone. I thought you'd been cleaning your teeth as well. Pass it back That's his annual joke. Monthly joke. That was annual. Yeah, he's had to cut back. He was running his repertoire, wasn't going to last his service, you see, so <laughs> let's just start cutting back on the old jokes. Low Hills firefighters continue the search. Yeah, did you get that message before? There might be two school kids swapped. Hello? 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 Problem kids on the back here. Yeah. <laughs> the in the last year, two children in the Merseyside area have needed intensive care after falling off fire engines on call outs. Kids on the back, we've had a number of children injured over the years, so it is a big problem. Um, try and do our best to make sure they don't hurt themselves, you know. So what do you think of the job so far, then? The quiet. Is it, is it what you thought it would be like? No. No. What did you think? Do you think it would be fires all the time? Yeah. I know, I thought it would be fires all the time. That was just from 9 o'clock this morning. <laughs> They're not locking us in. Locked in. 
I think the men of lesser intelligence, not myself, obviously, <laughs> do get very bored very easily. Uh oh, uh oh, oh dear, coming in. Right, here it comes. <laughs> you alright in there? Yeah! <laughs> Seems to be locked in, mate! Couldn't let us out, could you? I'll see if I can go and find the key. Okay! <laughs> You're looking. Okay, keep looking, lads. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's a responsible figure. Sure, he'll let us out. I just find the key. Just find the key <laughs> for us, uh, Funny enough, other people have said that. Did you have, like, set things to do in the day? Check hydrants, clean BA sets, do whatever you'd have to do, you know? We joined to do fire brigade stuff, didn't we? Go to fires and that. So that's what we're happiest doing. Find that key then, eh? Sorry, lad. Oh, oh look. Ah, oh, look, see, responsible. Hello, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. That'd be best for you. All right. Have you done them now, then? Yeah, nearly done, Sam. When you've done that, Mark, just come in the office because I want to get a few details. Mark, if you want some more practice, just do that set there. <laughs> I would do, but I've got to go into the office now. I've, I've just seen all your people here. <laughs> We've gone through phases just lately where it's nothing to have ten or more fires on nights, if not more. And now, lo and behold, our new recruit's here and he's twiddling his fingers and thumbs, unfortunately. It must be confusing for him. I'm sure he'd like it to be busier than this is. Mark's been with Red Watch for two days and hasn't yet been called to a fire. Oh, I say. I like how we go. Finally, Mark's first call to a fire. After four months of intensive training, this is Mark's first opportunity to put what he's learnt to the test. First job, this. Mark's first fire. Not upstairs! Well, nothing upstairs. What's the floor in the back? In this back room, the floor's all gone, you know. I'm just having a little bit of a job finding it. Just give it a good soap, Mark. How much water are you putting on it? Don't flood the house out! I think he's killed it good style. I sent him for a bit of experience with a, an experienced uh, firefighter with him. Well, this is his first BA job, his second day on the station. And it's not bad for a, you know, a young fireman. It was good. Good to, boy! Good to get in at last. About time as well. Two days. This is 
haven't got ice cream vans following us now. Can't be selling much ice cream. A week ago, Red Watch rescued Julie McNally and her four children after the fire that started in their microwave left them trapped inside their house. And again! Tonight, they're meeting the men who helped rescue them. Are you going to give the fireman the sweet Hello? to Lewis and say thank you? Let me talk to them. Mate, it's a fair and you know. That's Sean, he's the biggest. And this is Lewis, who's four on New Year's Day. And Lewis likes to put things in microwaves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you, what's this? And what did he put in the microwave, Mum? Oh, Mummy's makeup and Mummy's a rollers. Makeup. And a rollers. Jeanette's nearly three. Oh. So you can't reach the microwave? No, not yet. <laughs> I'm not going to get one again anyway. <laughs> Did you do that? It was. It was a smile. Very good. Seconds are vital in a fire like that. Thick black smoke, especially like young kids. You only need a couple of sniffs and they're there. Could have turned out different, you know. Everyone's for your mind. Could be your own. What would you do in the same situation if it was your own? You've got to do your best for them, haven't you? A smoke alarm can give valuable extra minutes warning of a fire. Neither Julie's house nor the first house Red Watch were called to on that morning had smoke alarms fitted. The one-year-old baby Jake, who was rescued from the first fire, spent two weeks in hospital and is now expected to make a full recovery. The man who rescued baby Jake from the upstairs room was traced. He's Andrew Johnson, who works opposite the house. Well, I could see the flames in the baby's cot, so I put my hat over my face, stood up, grabbed the baby, got back on the floor, crawled my way back down the stairs again. As far as I'm concerned, I'm safe that child's life. The other survivor of the fire, Brownie the rabbit, also made a full recovery. <laughs>